Let's now talk about the visitor design pattern. So the guiding principle for implementing this pattern is the separation of concerns. It's specifically, we want to separate between uh, language constructs, namely the structure of the language, versus the operations. We want to separate these two notions. And the way to do it is classes from these two sets are simply decoupled, then separated, and organized into two separate clusters. Let's take, let's take a look. So this uh, part over here is the architecture for uh, the bound diagram for the uh, visitor design pattern. You can see we got two separate clusters over here, right? Let me just uh, uh, color them just to make sure it's clear to you. And remember, we talk about open close principle and we talk about alternative number two from the previous video. So if you look at the previous video for alternative number, uh, for the previous uh, notes, for alternative number two, the structure should be closed and the operation should be open, right? Let me uh, make that uh, connection over here. So the structure is basically where the composite pattern is implemented. So now this part over here is going to be closed. So now let me just uh, highlight it. So this part over here is actually uh, closed. Okay. Whereas the other the other cluster, which will be about the operations, which I'll speak about. So this part over here is I'm going to put green for open. Okay, so basically you can think about this part over here is closed. And this part over here is open. So we are really satisfying the open close principle. Okay, and if you look, look a little bit clo more closely, you can see uh, here we got lang uh, expression language, the structure, and the name is uh, expression operation on the other end, right? Okay, so that's the first thing I would like to talk about. And if you go back to the slides, uh, that will simply say we satisfy the open close principle and then uh, close for the language constructs and also the open for the operations. And um, whether the visitor pattern should really be applicable or not for your project or your development, you can definitely apply the open close uh, principle. Think about for your system, do you expect changes to happen more to this part over here or more to this part over here? If for your particular developments, if the changes are more often to modify this particular cluster, in that case, you should use the visitor pattern because this is exactly the open part. On the other hand, if the changes for your system, as you can vision, are more likely to occur for the closed part, which means by extending the language structure, by uh, keep adding more and more, uh, maybe multiplication, addition, uh, you know, more language construct over here. In that case, visitor pattern should not be used. Right. All right. And then uh, we talk. Uh, OK, so that's about, again, the open close uh, that we talk about. So if you if uh, if it was decided that the language construct are simply open, so that means uh, we are uh, more often to change the language uh, language construct part. In that case, the visitor pattern should not be used. All right. So now that's about the uh, for the slides. So now let me go over in details how exactly the supplier site is going to implement the visitor pattern. You can think about the whole architecture over here will be the implementation for the visitor pattern. So that's a supplier's uh, point of view. And then after we have done this diagram here, over here is about how the client is uh, supposed to use the visitor pattern. We'll get there. Right. Let's now talk about one by one. Let's go to the uh, uh, this part over here first about the composite part. Remember, let me just remind you there. Remember in the previous design uh, attempt, we simply put all the operations over here and into the classes over here, right? The composite. But now you can see the visitor pattern, we basically factor all these operations out into another cluster to the uh, uh, language operations cluster, the open part, basically. That's, well, that's how you should really make that connection between the two designs. Okay, let me just go back there for the visitor architecture over here. So now you can see we got expression, we got constant, we got composite, we got addition, just the same as before. But now the interface for every expression class is now much cleaner. We only got one uh, command over here called accept. Okay, so now uh, I'll explain about exactly how the accept should be implemented later. But uh, for now, just know that we have a one uh, at the interface level, we got this uh, feature here. So it's called accept over here. And then you can see it takes only one parameter uh, of type visitor. And the visitor is simply just the top class of the hierarchy in the other cluster. You can see under the visitor, uh, which is deferred, we got 
uh, as many uh, effective descending classes as you like. But for this case, we just got evaluator, we got pretty printer, and also we got type checker. Each class simply just corresponds to one operation. All right. And uh, this one uh, clarification well, I would like to make. You can see there is a client supply arrow over here with the label accept. As we learned from the previous design diagram lecture, so whenever you want to put a label, you should really put a name of the supplier. You can see that apparently the name of the supplier over here should be V. So it would be also correct if you simply put V over here. So V is of type uh, visitor. However, in this case, I'm putting accept just because I want to emphasize it's really the accept feature that's going to accept the uh, supplier visitor. Okay? So you sh uh, we only use this whenever we want to emphasize. So I would say for your particular design diagram, I would say you should, uh, you should really typically should uh, only stick to the name of the supplier for the, for the labels. But for the, uh, we also do this also for the observer pattern. You can also check back for the attach and detach label and also for the visitor pattern. So these are the only two cases where we're trying to use this uh, kind of exceptional labels. Okay? But you should really stick to the uh, standard whenever possible. Okay? Something I'll let to clarify first. Okay, so that's about uh, this particular accept. I'll talk about exactly how you can implement this in just a moment. Uh, let's talk about uh, over here. You can see this is actually deferred, meaning that you want to implement in every descending class that's effective over here, you should implement it. You can see the signature remain the same, taking visitor and taking visitor. However, it will be implemented over here in the descending classes versus being deferred. All right. So that's about this cluster over here. Hopefully so far so good, except that I need to, I promise I will tell you the how to implement uh, the accept over here precisely. Okay. Again, and then we got this particular uh, client supplier relation. So let's talk, take a, uh, take a look at the uh, expressions, uh, express, expression operations uh, cluster over here. So now let's talk about this. For the visitor class, is, which is deferred, so now you can see we got one and two. So now here's my question to you. Think about it. Look at the name. Visit constant and visit addition. Can you see any correlation between the number of deferred features that's in the visitor class does it correspond to some number that actually can be observed from this particular expression language cluster? So there is a correlation. Correlation over here, the number of visit over here, I'll put a star here, which means it can be anything, right? Visit constant, visit addition, number of visit uh, routines and what okay pause the video if you want to think about it okay all right assuming that you have thought about it it should be between the number of visit uh, routines of uh, for example visit constant and also visit addition so visit constant really correspond to one of the effective class over here and visit addition also correspond to another uh, effective class over here. So now the correlation should be between the number of visit uh, routines and the number of effective classes in the expression language cluster. In expression language cluster. This is a very important property of the visit visitor pattern. Because you think about what we're doing over here. We are basically saying we used to have, let's say, pretty printing, type checking, and also the uh, evaluation, uh, the three operations. And those three operations should be done for over here and also for over here. So what we're doing is we're trying to put all these code over here uh, into the uh, expression operations cluster. So now we want to make sure whenever we talk about visitor, what kind of expression can you visit? In that case, we should really enumerate exhaustively all the effective classes that should be visited. In that case, they should correspond to the effective descending classes. Notice that we don't really we don't really say over here visit composite and visit expression. They are way too general. Although you can put it, but I think that will be a little bit more advanced, which we don't talk about in this lecture. 
But I'll say the standard is you simply say uh, number of uh, visit uh, commands over here or routines over here simply correspond to the number of uh, effective classes over here, right? Let me just uh, emphasize that. All right, that's number one about a correlation. And number two, you can see that all the routines over here are simply deferred, meaning that for every effective classes, effective uh, effective descendants of the visitor, they have to implement uh, these routines over here, right? And then let's take a look at uh, the uh, the type over here. You can see when you say visit constant, the type is simply just constant, which uh, correspond to the constant over here. And then let me use a different color. If you say visit addition, and you can see the type here is simply addition, which correspond to the addition over here, right? That's just a re, uh, reaffirming. And then you can see evaluator and also pretty printer. Evaluator, pretty printer, and also type checker. Each one of them is uh, simply correspond to a operation that you want to uh, perform on the composite uh, language uh, constructs. All right, so that means later on, if you want to add a new operation, what should you do? Think about it, and then I will go over this uh, together with uh, re-examination uh, re of the design principles uh, later in, uh, in the last part of this lecture here. Okay, so that's about the uh, architecture for the visitor pattern, right? So now I would say just by looking at the architecture over here may not be so easy for you to really uh, imagine how it is going to work. Uh, that's okay, it's normal, but I think uh, as long as you kind of keep uh, Keep in mind the points I just mentioned about the static architecture, it should be okay up to now, all right? So let's now talk about how you can use the visitors as a clients. So that's some, uh, the next point. Let's see how we can do that. We simply got uh, a routine over here called the test expression evaluation. Just think about it as part of the client's code. What we should do is we're gonna de uh, declare, we declare at C1 and C2. So these are simply expressions. So that's something we already talked about how you can uh, build composite uh, objects. And then we we'll simply declare V of static type visitor. So as soon as you see this, you should really try to re recall what you learned from the inheritance lecture, right? You can see the visitor over here is simply the static type. What about dynamic type? Well, dynamic type, you can see basically any of the descending classes of visitor would be okay, which includes either evaluator or pretty printer or type checker, each either one of them, right? It can be evaluator, it can be pretty printer, or it can be type checker, right? So one uh, one of the three. All right, so this part over here basically is what we discussed before. It, it is simply just going to build the composite structure of uh, composite objects. Uh, like, a, for example, in this case, it will simply just be one plus two, okay? It, that's what we are building, just building one plus two. Oh, okay, I'm gonna omit this part. We can review this part when we want to trace the code later. But now this is the main line you have to know. Whenever the clients actually want to use the visitor pattern, the uh, the code the client has to has to write is very simple. All they gotta do is they're going to have. To, let me just write it down here. They have to write at dot accept and then v over here. So think about the add over here, the context object is a composite objects. So whenever you're done building the composite objects, maybe one plus two, maybe uh, one plus two plus three and etc. right? So the composite uh, objects. Okay, and then this part over here is simply just a visitor objects. Statically, the V is simply just a visitor. Dynamically, it can be either for evaluation, it can be for pretty printing, or it can be for uh, type checking dynamically. But we're going to see how exactly dynamic binding is going to work at the runtime in the next video. But for now, just want to show you. So this is all the clients has to, has to write. They give the con uh, composite objects uh, as a context object and call accept, right? Remember, composite object is actually expression, which does define accept over here. So that's why I can call the accept. And the accept will take only a single parameter, which is of type visitor. Dynamically, it can be evaluator, pretty printer, or type checker. All right. Let's say you're done with this. So as soon as this line over here is done, okay. 
So now let me just, uh, as far as this line is concerned, all you have to know is, so this one is going to, the visitor will visit at, the visitor V actually, the visitor V will visit at automatically as soon as you make this call. Exactly how this happened automatically, it has to do with something called dynamic uh, double dispatch, which I'll speak about in the next video. All right, and now we want to talk about this particular block of code, which is also very important, right? Remember we said the static type of V is actually simply visitor. And I said to you, once you call this line over here, the visitor will already visit, I put in quote visit, will already process the uh, uh, composite over here. Remember the dynamic type of V over here is simply just an evaluator. Evaluator over here, that's the case, right? So we are already talking about evaluator in this case. So that means uh, the visitor will really visit the composite object for evaluation purpose. So once the visit is actually done, so they will have the result ready for you as a client to use, okay? This is how we use it. So you can see apparently we're trying to do a cast. So why is a cast necessary? That's a very important question to know. So let's see why. Let's simply uh, see this. Let's say without a cast. Okay, so now if I simply put it here, let's say without a cast. Which means you will simply say V. If you simply say V dot, so rather than casting that into evaluator uh, s eval and then say eval the value we we'll simply say v dot value will that compile that's a question right according to this particular architecture diagram here so basically also according to the standard for the visitor class over here the only features you want to include will be just the visit routines you don't really include any uh, like a value over here so value does not exist okay in the uh, visitor so this one does not compile okay because value is not declared in visitor okay that's important to note however you might be wondering uh actually in the diagram i didn't really show but let me talk about it so now what about a value over here where should it be uh declared Okay, so now I, before I talk about it, let me remind you one of uh, uh, one facts which I talked about previously. When I was trying to explain to you about the uh, the various operation for design attempt number one, for example, for evaluates, you simply uh, return a result like an integer for three hundred three. If you want to do pretty printing, either prefix or postfix, so presumably they should just be a string value rather than integer, right? And then on the other hand, you can see over here, if you, when you talk about type checking, uh, type checking over here, it's going to return either true or false. True if the type check, uh, the, if, the, if the type checking succeeded, uh, and false if uh, there's a type error, right? So you can see, depending on which operation you're using, for evaluate, it will give you integer result. For pretty printing, it's going to give you a uh, string result. For type checking, it's going to give you the Boolean result. So it really depends on which operation you're doing. So that's why you shouldn't really define a value at the top level of the visitor over here because you wouldn't really know what value it should be. So now if you simply just try over here to say V and then you don't really know what type it should be because it could be integer, it could be a string or it can be Boolean, right? So now this is not a place to declare the value. Instead, what we will do is, which I didn't show here, that's why I want to have the discussion here, extended discussion. What you want to do is, for every specific uh, concrete visitor or effective visitor, you want to declare some uh, specific features that's applicable to that particular uh, operation. For example, for evaluator, you can simply say value over here, that's a new feature I want to declare, will be of type integer. Okay, so that will make the architecture complete. And then for the pretty printer, it's going to also maybe value. However, this is going to be, uh, to be of type string. And for the type checker, it's just going to indicate whether it's type correct or not. So that will be a Boolean. So now you can see this, okay? So that will make the architecture complete. 
As far as the visitor clause is concerned, we only declare the visit routines. Whereas for each of the descending clauses that's effective, we may have to define some uh, feature, for example, value that's applicable to only this particular operation. For evaluation, you're going to return integer as the evaluation result. For pretty printing, you're going to return a string value as the pretty printing result, and etc. All right. So this is why. Over here, since we are using the evaluator dynamically, so we had to cast into evaluator. Let me just give you one more uh, extended uh, fragment of code to really uh, reaffirm the idea. Let's say we are now done with uh, the evaluation result over here. So now we want to, let's say we also want to do pretty printing. How can we do it, right? What you will do is, uh, let me just uh, try to expand the code. Let me use green over here. So now let me just uh, write it over here. Okay, so now, first of all, we're going to change that the dynamic type for V. So we're going to say creates. I'll just continue. You can think about what I'm writing here. It's simply continue from uh, the last line over here, just after line number 10. I can say creates uh, the same V. I want to reassign, uh, reattach that to a different objects. Let's say pretty printer. So pretty printer I'm talking about. So pretty printer. And then V dot make. So this essentially reattach the V into some dynamic, uh, dynamically a pretty printer objects. So now I'm gonna write this line again. If I say at dot accept and then V. So now I can see it's exactly the same line over here. So now think about this line over here versus this line over here. In both cases, the V is going to automatically visit the at. However, depending on the dynamic type of V, in the previous case, the V over here is a dynamically evaluator, so it's, it's going to automatically uh, visit the at for evaluation purpose. But right now, because the V has been changed to dynamic type pretty printer, so that means it's going to re, uh, visit the at for uh, pretty printing purpose. Okay. So now, as soon as this line is done, we can now write the final line. But now we want to do a cast because now dynamically it's now rather than evaluator it's not going to be a pretty printer let's not do it so i can say uh over here i'm just running out of space a bit but let me try my best so you can say check we're gonna say pretty printer and then we're gonna say uh v s so now i can say pp for pretty printer then okay so now this will be the end part so now what can we do? So now you can say P, uh, rather than eval over here dot value, I can say PP, pretty printer dot value. What should it be? For example, I can say tell that it should be a string value. For example, here it should be uh, one plus two. I can say one plus two over here. All right? Of course, that will be the result is simply reassigned to. Okay, it's not, uh, yeah, it should be result. I'm just saying uh, for, uh, abbreviate, uh, 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 for abbreviation. All right, so uh, that's about how the clients can actually use the visitor. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So let me uh, just uh, mention again the very important point that you, you don't want to miss. What I tried to explain the last part of this video was why do we really need a cast over here? It's really because the visitor class by standard simply only declares the visit function or the visit commands any features that should be specific to the result for each, uh, each of the operation should be declared separately in here. In that case, you can see they're simply of different types. So that's why they simply cannot exist in a single class, right? And in general, you might have more than one features that's specific to evaluator. You may have multiple features that are specific to pretty printer and etc. right? So now, from a client's point of view, all they have to do is, number one, they have to simply say whatever composite object I have, dot accept and pass a visitor of some particular dynamic type. Depending on the dynamic type, it's going to visit the composite objects in a particular way. We'll see that uh, precisely in the next video. And then once the uh, line is called, we're not going to simply cast the variable, uh, sorry, the visitor, since they, ha they have already visited the uh, uh, composite object, so they should contain the result. So now we had to uh, cast them into the right type. For example, in this case, evaluator, and in this case, uh, pretty printer, and then get a result. All right. 
All right, so that's about uh, two things that we talk about for the visitor pattern. So one is about the architecture, and the other one is about the uh, the uh, clients. So, so this part is the supplier, and this part is the clients. So review the details before we uh, speak about how the exactly uh, the visitor pattern works at the runtime in the next video.